Welcome aboard. Welcome to the podcast. It's time for Hawk Talk with Jerry Hawk. Look, everything, there are no new ideas. I'll just go right on. You go to my, uh, read my blogs. Everything that I talk about are on those blogs. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I do that, and I'm speaking directly to, from my heart here, that uh, there are marvelous books out there that you can read and uh, take advantage of. Um, the only reason you hire a guy like me is because I know how to implement it. I know how to get it up and get it up off the ground and get it to fly. What I try to do with all the people that I coach is turn them into coaching. Uh, coaches themselves um, so you know I've got this I went to a great uh, coaching school and um, uh, they basically said coaching is a two-part process the first part is to know yourself on a deeper level so that second part can happen move more powerfully towards what you want what do you want I find people they're stuck and they don't know what to do. And, and instead of going to shame or saying, shit, you should know the difference between this and this. I, you know, it's about being with them in that moment and helping them see some different perspectives. It's like setting up a contrast. And as leaders, and you are all leaders, that's all we have to do is we have to set up contrast. And we have to be with the people that we're trying to, to lead. And we have to meet them where they're at emotionally. Are they feeling anger? Are they feeling grief? Are they, are they afraid? Are they ashamed that they've done something wrong or that they can't do anything right? As leaders, we have to meet them where they are emotionally and coach them up into a place of helping them get what they want. How is that not needed in the workplace? So what I try to do is I try to teach all of my clients how to coach each other up. It's just that simple. Because I, I believe all of us can be coaches. So everything's a choice, right? Um, as leaders, if, if you make that a part of your own mantra, that everything is a choice, that nothing's happening to me, you'll stay out of what Dr. Stephen Cartman uh, uh, did a marvelous job. And, and I recommend that you go read any of his work. He calls it the drama triangle. So it looks like this. Drama. You are either playing victim, uh, rescuer, or persecutor. So in that space and as leaders, you can process yourself, you can look at yourself and say, what am I focused on right now? So if the focus is on what I do not want. So every single person that you come in contact with that has some form of drama going on in their life, they're totally focused on what they do not want to have happen. So think about what's happening right now in today's current affairs. And that's what people wanted to hear me talk about this stuff, is we're totally focused on getting COVID-19 or coming in contact with somebody with COVID-19 or spreading COVID-19. And oh my God, if everything gets shut down and we can't move around, I'm going to go broke or my kids are going to starve or, you know, the whole focus is on what I do not want to have happen. And then that naturally creates 
anxiety. Because you're not getting enough oxygen to the old noggin. Cortisol is being released in your bloodstream and you're, getting, you're, you're on the defensive. And then your behavior, your behavior becomes totally reactive. And if you look around at our leaders today, do you really have a lot of trust in the ones that are reacting or do you have more trust in the ones that are proacting? And it's not any different than where you're at in the workplace. As a leader, of course you feel anxiety. Of course you're scared. Of course the bottom could drop out of this thing. However, if you show that side completely and you're just focused on that, you're going to terrorize everybody that you're trying to lead. Right? So, in contrast to this, Dr. Cartman said, we can be in purpose. So instead of victim, we're in creator mode. And if I'm in creator mode, when I'm at my best, when I'm leading a team, the team's doing all the collaborating, all the brainstorming. I'm just there, I'm supporting. I'm motivating, I'm inspiring them. Keep tying them back to the vision, okay? So instead of victim, everything's happening to me, we're in creator mode. Instead of rescuer mode, we become the coach. That's why it's so important that we all become coaches. Instead of persecuting everything, we become the challenger. And that, all of this, is attached to the vision. And a lot of companies suck at vision. I've got these marvelous mission statements, vision statements. I go around to the associates and ask them, hey, tell me, tell me what your vision is. They can't answer it. I take a $100 bill and put it in front of them. I'll give you this $100 bill if you tell me what the vision of this company is. Can't do it. This, if when this is solid and this is solid, the focus then is really simple. It's not that. It's what I want. And that's what drives. And that's, that's when passion, real heart, felt, pouring out of your pores, passion shows up. That's the good stuff. And totally, the whole behavior then, unlike this, being reactive, is proactive. Create a, and create a culture of this versus that. You can get through anything.